Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll talk about the immune system. So let's get started. So before talking about all the components of immune system and all of the other parts, I previously made a video about immune system and I discussed about the historical perspective. So if you haven't checked it out, you may check it out. So talking about this video, so I'll be specifically discussing about the components of the immune system, which we known as the innate and the adaptive components. So I'll be more focused on the components and what are these components used for and what is its importance. So starting with it, so let's just talk about the first part, which is the immunity. So by the term immunity, what do we mean? So it's the state of protection from infectious disease, which has both a less specific and a more specific component. So the less specific component is the innate immunity, which provides the first line of defense against infection, whereas the more specific component is the adaptive immunity. All right. So innate immunity is something that is inborn or present with us uh, from our birth. All right. So innate immunity is the first line of defense and it's the form of defense that uh, helps us protect against common illnesses. Right. So I'll be discussing about more about these. So talking about the most components of the innate Im uh, immunity are present before the onset of infection and constitute a set of disease resistant mechanism that are not specific to particular pathogen, but that includes cellular and molecular components that recognize class of molecule peculiar to frequently encounter pathogens. So these set of uh, so the innate immunity contains certain resistant mechanism or pathogenic or uh, anti pathogenic stuff that is present inbuilt in our body which is already present whether we are infected or not so whenever there is an infection that arise in a, arises in our body so the innate immunity is the first line of defense that reacts to that particular pathogen and thereby combine to that pathogen to destroy it all right so innate immunity can be seen to comprise of four types of defensive barriers so it forms four types of barriers such as anatomic physiologic, phagocytic and inflammatory. So I'll be discussing about all of all four of these. So talking about the phagocytic cells. So we know, I hope, uh, I guess that the phagocytic cells, most of you know about already. So which are mainly present uh, such as macrophages and neutrophils, as you can see in the screen. So I'll be discussing in a broader range. So phagocytic cells majorly are the uh, macrophages and the neutrophils and barriers such as skin and a variety of anti microbial compounds synthesized by the host all play important roles in innate immunity. So these are the phagocytic cells which play a very important role in the innate immunity system. So this is the as you can see the types of it. So this is the anatomic barrier. This is the physiological barrier. This is the phagocytic barrier. This is the inflammatory barrier. So anatomic barrier are the skin and mucous membrane which provides the defense mechanism and uh, physiological barriers are the temperature change in this temperature low pH and chemical mediators which might occur uh, and phagocytic as we know which are specialized cells such as neutrophils and phagocytes and other monocytes as well which uh, help the help to break down the foreign particles and destroy them and thus ingest them and inflammatory barriers are caused when a tissue is damaged and infection is infection. There are chances of infection when our tissue is damaged. So inflammatory barriers are thus it closes the tissue damage or seals that part so that there is less chance of infection. So you may read the all the entire part of these. So this is a very easy part. So I'll just give a read for skin. It's a mechanical barrier which retards entry of microbes and it has an acidic pH of about three to five, which retards growth of microbes. And uh, the mucous membrane, which has the normal flora, compete with microbes for attachment sites and nutrients. Also, mucus interacts foreign microorganisms. So this mucous membrane or the cilia, all right. So this is present in uh, in our various parts of our body, which help to trap the microorganisms in their uh, hairy structures. All right. So these propel microorganisms out of the body. So some of the physiological barriers are temperature. So normal body temperature uh, inhibits growth of some pathogens. Also fever response inhibits growth of some pathogens. Low pH is acidity of stomach contents kills most of the ingested microorganisms. 
and chemical mediators are lysozyme which cleaves bacterial cell wall interferon which induces antiviral antiviral state in infected cells uh, complementalizes microorganisms or facilitates phagocytosis and there are other mechanisms as well so phagocytic i have already discussed so these are monoty monocytes neutrophils and macrophages which ingest and digest the foreign particle and inflammatory barriers are caused when a tissue is damaged and infection induced leakage of vascular fluid occurs containing serum proteins with antibacterial antibacterial activity and influx of bacteria phagocytic cells into the infected area so this is caused when a tissue is damaged and releases fluids which contains certain anti antibacterial activity which helps in the uh, phagocytic activity of that infected area so which ingests the entire part of that infection so talking about the uh, next component which is in contrast to the broad reactivity of the innate immune system which is uniform in all membranes of a species the specific component is the adaptive immunity so we'll talk about the adaptive immunity which is the more specific part which is which is something that is given to our body in case of any severe disease or any other something happens to our body so i'll discuss more about this so it does not come into play until there is an antigenic challenge to the organism so this particularly remains recessive in our body and until and unless there is an antigenic challenge that occurs due to injection of any antigenic species antigenic particle so which uh, induces or which uh, provokes the antibodies of our body to respond to that antigen all right so this pretty much remains recessive in our body and this happens when a vaccine is injected so which provokes the uh, activation of the antibodies in our body which bind to the antigen and thereby all the things happen so adaptive immunity responds to the challenge with a higher degree of specificity as well as remarkable property of memory so i'll talk about the, what it is memory so when the uh, when there is a collision or when there is combination of an antigen and an antibody so when these two combine so it leads to formation of b cells and t cells or activation of b cells and t cells occurs with the formation of memory cells as well so there is a key part of memory or memory cells uh, that is formed during the uh, combination of antigen and antibodies so i'll be discussing in the later part on the next video so typically so the, typically there is an adaptive immune response against an antigen within 5 or 6 days after the initial exposure to the antigen and exposure to the same antigen sometime in the future results in memory response and the immune response to the secondary challenge occurs more quickly than the first one so i'll be discussing about the memory cells that is formed so i'll just give a brief uh, knowledge about the memory cells which are formed so these memory cells are formed as there is a combination of the antigen and the antibody so due to the combination the memory cells which are formed at that point remembers the pathogen so remembers that antigenic particle all right so they remembers that anti particular antigen that combines with the antibody so thereafter what happens is so after let's say where uh, the memory cells remembers the first antigen that has combined with the antibody so let's say if that particular antigen again attacks the body and uh, tries to combine with the antibody the immune system will react very fast so uh, so that the competition of the antigen and the antibody is really quick so that they can destroy the particular antigen and thereby we can survive all right so this combination of antigen and antibody initially for the first time takes time all right so this is not very uh, not a very quick process so as you can see 5 or 6 days is required all right so the combination occurs with the formation of, with the activation of t cells and b cells along with formation of memory cells so at this point of time the memory cells remembers that particular antigen that has attacked the body so at so in the second time when that particular antigen attacks our body again the memory cells already know that 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 particular uh, antibody has attacked us previously so this time the immune system quickly reacts and the combination happens quickly so that the particular antigen can be destroyed so this is what uh, memory cells are used for go on with this so cells that ingest and destroy pathogens make up a phagocytic barrier to infection so as you can see this is a whole lot picture of the phagocytism phagocytic activity that occurs in the cells 
So this is the bacterium that becomes attached to membrane in evagination it's called Cytopedia. So it's a, that is attached to so the bacterium is attached to the cells. Uh, all right. So our bacterium is ingested forming phagosomes. So when a bacterium is ingested inside the cell, as you can see inside a bigger part, uh, which leads to formation of phagosomes. And phagosomes fuse, fuses with lysosome. So as you can see, the fusion occurs, which makes it a bigger part, even a bigger part. All right. And the lysosomal enzymes digest captured bacteria. All right. So lysosomal in enzymes. So the fusion of with lysosomes leads to formation of lysosome enzymes, which digest the captured material. And diation, diation products are released from the cell. So thereby, these diation products are released by the, from the cell. So this bacterium, so this particular bacterium or the host cell that is uh, attached to the membrane in vagination called Cytopoidia. All right. So this bacterium or the host cell that needs to be removed from the body happens through fusion or fusion with the lysosome, basically. So fusion with the lysosome. Thus, what uh, it forms uh, lysozyme enzymes and thereby it breaks down that bacterium and thus releases it out of the body. So this is how the phagocytic barrier occurs. I'll be discussing about more about this in a complex manner. I uh, will study more about the immune system in the next video. So stay tuned and let's just keep this video till here. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give this video a big thumbs up and I'll be back with another video very soon. Thank you for watching. Thank you.